Hello everyone, my name is Logan and welcome back to the lecture hall. Today I'm covering section 5.5, use substitution. So we had our FTC and we have our table of antiderivatives and all that stuff, but how would we solve something like this? The integral of 2x times the square root of 1 plus x squared dx. Well, that doesn't fall in, under one of the obvious integrals we have, and we also know that the two functions times multiplied together with taking the derivative, f of x times g of x prime, is not equal to f prime of x times g prime of x. We actually have to use our product rule when taking derivatives uh, of two functions multiplied together. So this can kind of, you know, imply, we can kind of think, oh, so that means that the integral of f of x times g of x dx is not equal to the integral of f of x dx times the integral of g of, g of x dx. So we can't just like split this into two integrals and then multiply them together. That wouldn't make any sense because we can't even do that with derivatives. So let's, let's test it out. We have this little thing called u substitution. I mean, hence the title of the video. <laughs> what we can do is we can take what's on the inside of this, right, and we can substitute it with a u. We could just say u is equal to 1 plus x squared. And then from there we have to find our du because we also need to change this dx into du, right? Because we couldn't do the integral of this and we also somehow have to get rid of this. Maybe that's possible with this. So if we took the, or the derivative of this 1 plus x squared and we do du, well it's just 0 plus 2x dx, right? And why do I say, well, 2x times dx. Well, because if we do the integral of u with respect to x, that is equal to du over dx. And what we do is we now we multiply both sides by dx, and we get that du is equal to 2x dx. We're like, wait, hold on a second. 2x dx, and we have this u. So this could be equal to the integral of square root of u times, well, du, right? Because that gets rid of our 2x, and that gets rid of our dx. So this can be just times du. We're like, hey, we actually know how to do this one because, well, it's the square root. And what's our square root? Well, that's just power rule. So this is equal to the integral of 1 half du, which is equal to 2 thirds times u to the 3 halves. OK, well, that's cool and all, but now, we're, now we have u's. Well, what do we do? We just take this u and substitute it back in, and we get that the integral of this is equal to 2 thirds uh, square root of 1 plus x squared cubed, right? That's our 3 halves. And then we always put that plus c because this is an indefinite integral, right? So this is what we call u substitution. We take what's ever inside of a certain function, right? Because if we were to now, differentiate this, we'd have to use chain rule, and then it would equal this 2x times the square root of 1 plus x squared. So u substitution is basically taking a very complex function, pulling it out of our integral, replacing it with u, and then it usually ends up as a very simple function that we know how to integrate. And then we just throw, you know, we substitute it back in. Now we can express our u substitution in terms of functions, right? We have the integral of f prime of g of x times g prime of x dx is equal to f of g of x plus c because of the chain rule, right? Because if we take the derivative of f of g of x, we get that that is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x, right? So, you know, this is just going backwards from this. So, if we now make u equal to g of x, that means that the integral of f prime of g of x times g prime of x dx is equal to the f of g of x plus c, which is equal to f of u, hey, that's what the function says, not me, plus c, is equal to, now, the integral of f prime of u du. And then we kind of think, like, wait, don't we need this u prime? And to multiply there. And what I would say is no, because our du, if you recall, is equal to g prime of x dx, right? So 
our u, this is just the derivative of u, because if we have u, and we just took the derivative of this, well, that's just equal to 1, right? So we don't need another u prime function. It's kind of absorbed by this du with the g prime of x, and then the derivative of u is just 1. Now we get the official substitution rule and substitution rule for definite integrals. So if u is equal to g of x, and is, differ is a differentiable function, and continuous on the interval, then the integral of f prime g of x times g prime of x dx is just equal to the integral of f of u du, right? And now we can extend this to the substitution rule for definite integrals. Yet again, the function has to be continuous and um, differentiable. But we can say that the integral from a to b of f prime of x g of x times g prime of x dx is now just equal to the integral for g, g of a to g of b of f of u du, right? Because we're taking this u and we're making it g of x, right? And normally we plug in a and b into this g of x after the thing is done, but now we can just replace it and just say, well, now these new bounds are equal to g of a and g of b. And this is really nice because now we don't actually have to resubstitute our u back in at the end when we're dealing with definite integrals. If you're dealing with indefinite integrals, of, the, of course, though, you can't leave it in terms of u. You have to substitute the whatever your g of x is back into every u at the end of these integrals. But here, you can just plug g of a and g of b in at the end of the differentiation. Okay, now onto the last part of our lecture. We have the integrals of symmetric functions. So we suppose f is continuous on negative a to positive a, then a. If f is even, which that means f of negative x is equal to f of x, then the integral from negative a to a of f of x dx is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx. And then b, if f is odd, f of, x, f of negative x is equal to negative f of x, then the integral from negative a to a of f of x dx is equal to 0. So, this is very nice because sometimes what they'll be on tests or in the book problems or whatever it may be, you, they'll give you a very, very tough integral, but maybe one that you don't even know how to solve. But you can see like, oh, this is an even function or an odd function. And if usually the really, really hard ones are odd functions where they're like, oh, integrate from, you know, negative 2 to 2. And then you see, wait a second. It's odd, so it's going to be zero anyways. I don't have to do the integration. So an example of even and odd functions, well, we have cosine, which is an even function. And how do we see that? Well, let's just say this is from negative a to a, where our a's is what? Pi over 2? Yes, pi over 2. Well, we can see, if I drew this graph properly, that this a is going to be equal to this a, right? So if you draw it, or you were to do the integral from negative a to a, we can see like, oh, wait a second. This is just double the area, double the two times this area, right? From here to here, it is just two times this area. But if we see sine and we do it, well, you know, this hump cancels out with this hump. So if you're going from negative a to a of sine, well, sine's an odd function, so it'll just equal zero. So those are just two examples of even and odd functions. Um, and this is all I wanted to cover for the lecture portion of the video. Let's transition to some practice problems. All right, now onto our practice problems. We are going to do the integral of x squared times e to the x cubed dx. So we're like, okay, well the u substitution here should at least be obvious because we have our function and then this would be the composition of that function. So we can just say, well, our u is going to equal x cubed, right? And that should make sense. But now we have to find our du, so we differentiate. So we do du dx is equal to 3x squared. And now we can multiply by dx on both sides, and we get that now du is equal to dx, or du is equal to 3x squared dx. And we're like... Okay, that's like almost it, but there's this 3. So 
what do we do? Well, we're just substituting everything. So what we're going to do is just take this 3 and divide it on both sides so that now this is x squared dx. And we have this now instead x squared dx is equal to du. It is equal to du over 3. So now we can rewrite this integral as the integral of 1 third e to the u du. And we're like, okay, sweet. And now we can just integrate this, right? We pull out this 1 third, and then it's the integral of e to the u of du. Well, that's just going to be equal to e to the u, right? Because e to the x, uh, the integral of e to the x is equal to e to the x. So now it's equal to e, uh, 1 third e to the u, and our u, right, is this x cubed, so we have to substitute it back in, and we get it's equal to 1 third e to the x cubed, right? Cool. So that's how we do it. But we're forgetting something. What is it? What is it? Plus e. Now we have number 30, and it states the integral of secant squared x dx divided by tan cubed x. Well, now it's like, oh my god, we have trigs and we have secants and tangents. Uh, we know tangent is equal to sine, of, sine over cosine, and we know secant is equal to 1 over cosine. Do we have to do anything with that? Well, no, because we want to look at this a little closer. We say, well, this is also equal to secant squared x dx over tan cubed, or tan x cubed, right? And then we look, well, let's just say our u is equal to tangent. Well, now if we do the differentiation, we see, well, if we were to differentiate, we do du dx. Well, what is the derivative of tangent? It's just equal to secant squared x, right? And then we're like, wait, hey, this, hey, wait a sec. If we were to multiply by dx on both sides, both sides, we get du is equal to secant squared x dx. And we're like, hey, we have that right there. So we can rewrite this as the integral from 1 over u cubed dx, du, pardon me, du. And now this is really easy to solve because it's just reverse power rule. Well, what do we do? We add 1 and then we multiply by 1 over n plus 1. So this is equal to the integral of u to the negative 3 du, right? And so now we add 1, and then we divide by negative uh, 3 plus 1. Well, this is now just equal to negative 1 half u to the negative 2 plus c. And then we're like, okay. That looks good. Now we just plug in our tangent, and then we get that it is equal to negative 1 over 2 times tan x squared plus c. And we get our answer, and we're like, oh, wow, that was a lot easier than trying to change this with maybe trig identities. I don't even think that way it would really work, but it definitely works doing it this way. So this is u substitution. And it's a lot of guess and check, actually, because maybe you don't see to use tangent at x first, and that's totally fine, but it takes a lot of practice. So I highly recommend do as many practice problems from the textbook or worksheets that your professors give you, because this stuff is kind of tricky, but once you get it down, that's a lot of math to be integration. A lot of it is just use of. So that is all I wanted to cover for this video, use substitution. There will be suggested uh, homework problems in the description of the video. As always, my name was Logan. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.